What's up, what's up YouTube? It's your boy Ali Nadem and I'm back. Today I'm gonna to talk about five critical tips on how to maximize performance in FL Studio 12. So I had an old bullshit video. We're gonna put that aside. We're gonna refresh that shit, some 2017 action. So let's get started. Tip number one, your audio settings. Choosing your audio driver. This is critical. This is gonna pave the way for how smooth your playback is. And there are two important things. You're gonna to wanna to go to options audio settings and you're gonna see a drop down menu that says direct sound and ASIO devices. Now you don't wanna use any of the direct sound devices. You're gonna to wanna to leave that as a last resort because the latency is very high, the performance is terrible and you might see it as like a real tech device or something else with a ridiculous amount of buffer length. The ASIO devices it's, is what you're gonna to wanna to use because the performance is better it's gonna have uh, more fluid playback and it's gonna be an overall better experience. So you might see things like FL Studio ASIO, you might see ASIO for all. And for guys that have a high-end sound card that has an ASIO driver, that's also a third option. So let's talk about that. Um, now ASIO for all is a driver uh, for all versions of Windows and basically it's a driver to supplement when you don't have an, a sound card that ha has a uh, that has audio drivers. So ASIO for All is great. Uh, the benefit of using ASIO for All is that you have very low latency, uh, you're able to push out a lot of playback and pretty much have your project playing very smooth, very fast. Now, comparing that to something like FL Studio ASIO, FL Studio ASIO does have benefits. It does let you do other things at the same time, like video editing or referencing something on YouTube but the downside is that the performance isn't as great. ASIO for all is usually greater than or equal to FL Studio ASIO. Now moving on to the third option. Third, last but not least, is the driver that is coming with your sound card. So for me, I'm using the Scarlett 2i2. I'm gonna link it in the description. Uh, Scarlett 2i2 is fantastic. That's probably the best sound card you can get under 200 bucks. If you guys are looking for a good USB sound card. Now, maxing out the latency, is somewhere around 11 milliseconds on my sound card. And um, it translates to around 1300 samples or maybe around 32 to 64 MS, meaning that my responsiveness is great. And when I, when I say responsiveness, uh, I'm gonna go over that in the second tip regarding your buffer length and how long you wanna make your buffer length. But basically, avoid the direct sound, stick with your ASIO devices and from top three, from best to worst, I'd say your ASIO device that's shipped with your sound card, make sure you get the latest driver from the manufacturer. Second, I'd say ASIO for all. And last but not least is your uh, FL Studio ASIO. So with everything said and done, let's move on to tip number two. Listen here, Pinocchio. Tip number two is gonna be buffer length. So buffer length is gonna be something that is related to your system. So you're gonna have to tweak this one. To give you some uh, background on buffer length, the higher the buffer length, the less likely that your project is gonna have pops or crackles. And buffer length is your 64 MS or 128 MS. And the higher the buffer length, the more fluid and smooth your playback will be. However, there is a compromise. So the compromise is that for you guys that like the responsiveness, when you play back in your piano roll, when you press on a MIDI keyboard, you want it to be fast. The higher you move up that slider, the less responsive your overall system is gonna feel. Uh, when you press, you know, when you give a keystroke, it's gonna take, you know, much longer before it actually triggers in FL Studio. So this is gonna be something that you're gonna wanna find a sweet spot. I'd say start in something fair, maybe in a 64 to 128 milliseconds, and um, you can increase it if you're having pops and crackles. Um, and of course, you can decrease it if everything seems fine and fluid, and find that sweet spot. Now. Uh, with my Scarlett 2i2, I get great performance, so thankfully I don't have to worry too much, I just max it out. But buffer length is gonna be something that you're gonna wanna tweak. And I'd say probably leaving it at something fair, like 128 MS, uh, is probably gonna be great for most users. Now again, this is gonna be subjective. The more plugins you're running, the more generators or instruments you're running, the more effects you're running, are gonna push more strain on your project and uh, you're gonna have to bump up that latency to compensate for it. If you guys are having troubles and ASIO for All isn't kicking it for you, um, if FL Studio ASIO isn't great for you, then 
um, definitely check out a sound card. Scarlett 2i2 is one of many that are available and they will give you superior performance because their ASIO driver and their hardware is definitely taking a lot of load off of the CPU. So definitely a good, good recommendation if you want to get one to increase your performance. <laughs> tip number three. Now tip number three is not to be overlooked. A lot of people might max this out thinking that they're doing something like great. Uh, it's resampling quality. So resampling quality is a setting that you'll see in audio options um, that is relative to when you time warp samples. So when you stretch a sample, if you stretch a track for a remix competition from 120 BPM to 128, when you adjust it up and down in pitch, you're you know, warping the time, the pitch envelope of that. And so with that being said, if you adjust that, the higher the quality, so if you move from like linear to six point Hermite or to 512 point sync, the higher the value, the better the overall quality will sound when you make those adjustments. Now, personally, I leave it at the second option. I believe it's the six point. And I would say for most people, leave it at that option. If you want to squeeze every bit of performance out of FL Studio, set it to linear, the lowest option available. And it doesn't, it's not a big deal because remember, during the export of your project, you can set it to 512 and get the best quality possible. So this is something I recommend uh, keeping on the low side because you don't want to have tons of sam samples, especially if you guys are working with a lot of samples and get bombarded by a lot of CPU usage. So set it to linear, set it to six point uh, Hermite and you know call it a day because you can always change that during your render. So let's move on. Tip number four. Tip number four, we're going to go over CPU multi-threading, sample rate, as well as safe overloads. Now, sample rate by default is probably going to be on 44.1 kilohertz. You're going to want to leave it on that. Most of the music that you're listening to on SoundCloud, YouTube, when you download an MP3 is in that format. So please leave it at that. Unless you know what you're doing, just leave it at 44.1. It's also less CPU intensive. The higher your sample rate, the more strain it's going to put on your overall system. So let's move on to safe overloads. What are safe overloads? Safe overloads in FL, they, and I'll, I quote, uh, no risk of GUI crashing um, during pops or crackles in your VSTs. So that's a good thing. I would leave it on. Um, where that can play a risk is if you're, you have an intensive project and there's crackles or pops maybe due to a low latency in your buffer length, and that could cause you know, your VSD to crash or an unexpected crash. So go ahead and leave that on. Last but not least is the multi-threading. So most people by now, 2017, I'm sure you're using a you know, multi-threaded system or a CPU with multiple cores. So it's probably gonna be in your interest to leave that on, on both of the settings. And so leave that on, that is your friend, and that will more than likely give you a boost of uh, performance. It's very unlikely and very rare for you to experience crashes or suffer performance uh, with that on. So with that being said, let's move on to the next tip. <laughs> tip number five is smart disable. So what is smart disable? Smart disable by default should be on and I recommend leaving it on. Uh, smart disable will spare CPU for VST effects when they're not in use. So how does that look? Uh, what does it look like in a project? So in a project with a lot of plugins, and um, to test this out, go ahead and throw some effects in your project, make sure you have some VSTs loaded up. And in a project that is very VST intensive, uh, Smart Disable will turn them off when they're not in use. So an example is like an EQ or a reverb that's not being used by this baseline can now turn off because of course the baseline is not in use anymore. Now there are some risks, there are some complications, and you're gonna to wanna to leave this on because you have to manually turn it on anyways. By default, it is, it's off for all of your plugins. So to turn this on, go to Tools, Macros, and it'll say Switch Smart Disable for all plugins. And what that does is it turns it on for all of your VSTs, all of your effects. And where you can see that option for each VST effect is if you open up an EQ or a compressor, you'll see it in the top left, the little arrow, and you'll see it says Smart Disable. You can turn that on or off. It'll be a little check. So um, this will spare a lot of CPU for you guys that have very effect heavy projects. Um, there is a reason why I don't use it. And the reason why I don't use it is because uh, on projects where I would have really long reverbs, 
really long delays, um, Smart Disable would just glitch out and think that my 30 second reverb, you know, is done. Is like, and it would play out 15 seconds, 20 seconds, and just cut right off. And I'd be like, whoa, what, what's going on? Why is it cutting off? And this was years ago, and I realized it was because of the Smart Disable. So if you guys have very strong processors, this isn't gonna be something that you really need to worry about, but you'll be able to spare a lot of CPU usage if you have effects that are very heavy. Um, go ahead and hit that macro in the tools options, but use a lot of caution because of course, that's the con that's associated to it. Um, effects or reverbs or delays might sporadically just cut off. So you're gonna to wanna to use this with caution when you're using it, but definitely a must if you have a very low end processor. If you combine that with all the other tips, you're definitely gonna squeeze out as much CPU available. Rewind the baseline, rewind. All right guys, I got a secret, okay? I got a bonus tip here, okay? This one gets overlooked so damn much by producers, including myself, for years. Even Mr. Snowman knows it, okay? This is gonna be super important. You're gonna see it in your view settings. View and close all unfocused windows or close all windows, or you can hit F12. Have you ever opened a project huge project, there's tons of effects going on, and all the knobs or dials that used to be very fluid and smooth are now taking forever, or they sporadically just jitter back and forth. So why this is a problem? Because when you're looking at your playlist and tons of effects or VSTs are loaded in the background, that's taxing your CPU, but more importantly, it's also taxing your graphics. Because keep in mind, a lot of these effects have code for graphics acceleration. And if you don't close those windows, they're roaming in the background, they haven't been closed, and they might just stay open when you load up a fresh project. So make sure you do that. You might notice that when you do do that, all of a sudden your project is fluid and back at it because I neglected that forever and my plugins and projects were running like shit. Um, in fact, I reformatted my whole system thinking that it was associated to that when in fact it was just a basic option. So with that being said, if you do that, you should notice that everything is silky smooth. Okay, and I like that. I like that. I like that. So I hope you guys liked this video. Please share some love, give me a like, give me a dislike, comment below what you guys thought, and I would love to know your tips, your experience, what you guys do to improve performance in FL Studio or any other DAWs. And with that being said, please make sure you subscribe. If you loved my content, check out my Patreon, check out my SoundCloud, my Facebook, my Instagram. Y'all know who it is. Alina Dem in the house. I'm making all kinds of games!